hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. All right, it's the after show. In fact, it is uh, really the last after show we're going to do before Christmas because we're going to give everybody Christmas Eve off. Woo-hoo. Yay! Yay! Thank you. And By yes. that, we meant the listeners. <laughs> give, give them a break so they don't have to put up with exactly. us anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the gift that, they're all breathing a sigh of relief. Yeah, the now. gift that keeps on giving, right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. Could you guys like take Christmas Eve like once a month? <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Hmm, I think. I don't know. Anyway, we got Michelle, we got Jim, we got me, and it's the after show where we yak. Oh, yeah, we have callers too, uh, at least a few, until we start you know, taking callers and then they all go away. What is it about that? That's true. Oh, well, I don't know. It's, uh, I tell you what, we'll talk about Christmas presents and things in just a little bit, but first let's uh, yak with Ron. He's out of uh, Wagner, Oklahoma. Hey, Ron, you're on the after show. Well, it's good to talk to you, Tom. I got a, uh, a question for you. You probably know this right off the top of your head. I'm looking for the absolute number one best defensive round for a 22 long rifle being shot out of a four-inch uh, four barreled revolver. Okay. I'm old school. I like things that's got a cylinder and a hammer that never mm-hmm. jam, never stole pipe, mm-hmm. all that sorts of stuff. Okay. And um, I've been looking at a Taurus 94, which has nine shots, which is almost the capacity of, of you know, uh, about the same as single stack autos. And uh, I thought, well, if I could find a good, hot personal defense round, that's what I may opt to go with. Okay. Are you are you open to suggestions? Uh, sure. Okay. Forget the twenty two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I am serious as a heart attack. I would not. I would what, not give a member of my family a twenty two for self defense. What about twenty two mag? No. Okay. Why? Why would you do that if you're going to have a revolver? Uh, here's the thing: all handgun loads are lousy for self defense. Start off with that. So you might as well get the best you can get. Six rounds out of a 38 special or a 357 or even a 327 Federal is infinitely better than nine rounds of just ticking somebody off by shooting them with a 22. Now, I know people are going to say, well, more people have been killed with a 22. Yeah, that's not the issue. The issue is not. Here's the deal. You've got to really understand. It's not about what's lethal. Don't care. The goal is not to kill somebody. The goal is to stop somebody who's trying to kill you. And a twenty two doesn't stop people well. It, it, it could end up being lethal. They could die in the next week or so. But your goal is to make them stop in the next millisecond. And you do that by punching them in the nose or in the thorax with the you know most powerful thing you can. And a twenty two or a twenty two magnum, neither one of those are it. Now if that's all if you were talking about carrying a little North American Arms mini revolver, that'd be one thing. I'd say, okay, yeah, that's what if that's all you're gonna carry. But you're actually talking about buying a, a real pistol, a real revolver here. And if you're gonna do that, I would ask you to be open to the idea of getting something with a legitimate self defense cartridge. Well, maybe it's a holster issue, Tom, because I <clears throat> I have two of what I consider to be the best three fifty sevens on the market. I've got two GP one hundreds in the in the four inch uh, size, but mm-hmm. uh, and I really prefer the inside the waistband, and I really prefer the cross draw. And so mm-hmm. far, I have just not been comfortable with them. I find themselves, I find myself constantly adjusting them, adjusting them, adjusting them. Well, why don't I take out a billboard that says, "Hey, I got a big revolver tucked in here," you know? That's... What kind of belt? What kind of belt are you wearing? Uh, do what now? What kind of belt are you wearing? Uh, just a, a regular. Not a dress belt, but a, 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 a you know a fairly store thick belt. I'm going to say probably two it's inch. A, it's a store belt. It's it's, it's not yes, a sir. specific yes. gun belt. Okay, we can solve your problem. You're not going to believe me, but I'm telling you this will take care of your problem. Get a gun belt, a real gun belt. Mm-hmm. It will. T- I'm serious. That GP100 will not feel like a problem to you. But here I'm going to do. I'm going to step aside. I'm going to turn you over to the expert on this, Michelle. Talk to him about the revolver he ought to have. <laughs> well, of course, my my jump to gun is the Ruger LCR in the three twenty seven Federal Magnum. Yep, and it's and 
I can't say enough about it. It's an awesome firearm. Great for low recoil. Very lightweight. It's a double action only. You never have to worry about the hammer being caught on anything when you draw it. It's lightweight. And it shoots 32 Smith & Wesson, 32 Smith & Wesson Long, 32 H&R, and 327 Federal Meg. So you can definitely find any kind of ammo to take any kind of recoil that you want to reduce it down to or take it up to within those four calibers. So that's an awesome pistol. Yes, you're going to invest $600. You will not be upset about that. Right. Well, it sounds good. And I actually, you know, when you live, I don't even live in a one horse town. I live in a half a horse town. And, <laughs> wait, wait, I, I got to see that half horse now. <laughs> I mean, our, our idea of a traffic jam is when all four cars show up at the same time at the same stop sign. Okay. And you're all stopping and talking to each other so nobody goes anywhere. <laughs> That's right. And 327 uh, Magnum uh, ammunition uh, is just not down here. I mean, we have one major store. That's a Walmart. And uh, they just don't carry it because uh, either it's a it's a hard to get or b it's a not you know non seller uh, in this little town and so therefore I'd I'd have to go to Tulsa or somewhere else and then the quest begins you well, know try to find three twenty seven you wouldn't actually have to go anywhere you can order ammunition and it could be sent to you sir way or something yeah you, you, you could you midway can, it, mm-hmm. it'll sh- it'll show up on your doorstep it's cool. Or even, you know, like Mike McNett with Double Tap Ammo makes great yeah. ammunition. He'll Brown, ship it to Brownells, you. Brownells has ammo. A yep. lot of places you can buy it online, and, it, you know, in two or three days, there's your ammo sitting there on your doorstep. But do not, yeah. dis, don't dismiss that round, because it is very easy to shoot. The recoil is just completely manageable in that And, and it's a six-shot revolver, right? Right. I really prefer the four inch because you know the shorter the barrel, the less effective a magnum is. You might as well shoot thirty eights through it. Well, I, I would say uh, then if you want a four inch barrel, uh, there are like a gazillion four inch barrel mm-hmm. uh, thirty eight specials or three fifty sevens out there. You don't have to go you know big on that. Um, but I would also offer that the difference between three and four inch barrel, uh, no one could tell the difference. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Well, I appreciate the information, the input. Uh, but sure. I think what I'll start with is 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 the belt. There you go. The, the, I think try the belt for, and get a real gun belt. It's going to cost you fifty dollars or more, and you will later on you'll go, "Oh my heavens, that is such a difference! I can't believe that I fought that stupid revolver this long." I I will tell you, I carry a seven shot three fifty seven Magnum. Uh, on a good gun belt, and never even think about it. Really? Yeah, it's, it, but it's the belt. It's all about the belt. It really is. Are you are you are you five eleven, one hundred and sixty five pounds? Uh, I was at one time. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even, you're not saying you're shorter now, are you? <laughs> oh, guys. Well, hey, I appreciate the information. It's been good talking to all of you. I got my wife saying, "Hey, it's time to go to dinner." So. Uh, Merry Merry Christmas. Merry Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So, well, we're not talking about right now, but, you know, there was a time perhaps. uh, uh, Well, I'm glad we we kept him on because, you know, that gives us a chance to kind of diagnose it. And he's got the revolver he wants. The problem is he can't carry it comfortably. And I think we may have figured it out. Right. It is a big gun. It's a heavy frame gun. Yeah, the, it is. Um, and four they're inch big barrel. and they're heavy. Yeah, four inch barrel. Yeah, and my uh, I've got the, the Smith uh, six eighty six plus, and th- but it's seven shot. And it's a big revolver, but it's a three inch barrel, which is not much difference. Uh, but man, with a good holster and a good belt, I just don't find it a problem at all. Yeah. So I don't know, but I I do like the uh, Ruger three twenty seven is. It's a real sweetheart for Carrie. Yeah, I got to agree. Yeah, really? I, I thought I was maybe telling you something you didn't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Jim. Jim's not Sales listening, right? Yeah. No, actually, I, I got you guys a Christmas gift we can talk about after uh, we talk to Edward here. Oh. Okay. Edward's in Little Rock, Arkansas. Edward, yes, what's going on sir. here? How are you today? My question is I have a, um, a Winchester Model 100, 308 mm-hmm. cartridge. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be, uh, I fire a round through it, and it will, my ejector's not pulling my round out of my weapon. Mm-hmm. And I've cleaned it. So, you know, every time I, it does this, I clean it as well as I can. And I'll fire a couple rounds through it, maybe three, maybe four. Mm-hmm. And it'll do the same thing. Is my ejector 
Fouling up on me or what? Well, it could be. I'm going to give you something that's going to cost you nothing to check, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, when you clean the barrel, you clean it with a cleaning rod? I am. Okay. Have you cleaned the chamber? As well as I can. I'm not, I, I haven't, I have my own weapon. I can't seem to, the, the, the boat will not come back and stay. There was a recall on the Winchester Model 100 about 25 or 30 years ago. And I don't know That's if this one has told. been through it. Yeah. Uh, and I, as I remember, it had something to do with the ejector, I think. But I don't remember the details. That's a long time ago. Um, that's one of my uh, favorite rifles. I used to, well, that was what I shot my first deer with, was a, exactly that rifle, a Winchester Model 100 <laughs> 308. It's, a, it's so, wonderful. I mean, the way it feels. It is. I'm, I'm thinking, Michelle, I think, what do you think, a gunsmith visit was first up? I would say gunsmith visit or get on the phone with Winchester and see what they recommend. Maybe they'll still take it back and do something for him. I've tried to get on the phone with them. They pass through from one nut to the nut to the next, mm. and I don't. I'm, I'm on the phone forever. Yeah, I, if you have a reputable gunsmith, they can probably take care of the problem for you. I mm-hmm. mean, they'll do some test firing, I, so I take have, some ammunition. I, got, I, got, I have someone take it to. I just haven't done. I just thought I was on the phone here and right here on the listen to your program. I just thought I'd run the run it by you. Right, and the, like I say, if if you could find a way to clean that chamber, because uh, it could be that the chamber is just gritty, stucky, you know, kind of stuck, sticky is what I'm trying to say, uh, and uh, it may be hanging up in there, and if you could polish it out with steel wool or something, that might be, you know, that's a, a cheap way to go. Uh, you got to work at it with something that's not... Well, you can't, like, pull well, the bolt out. I have a wire brush on the end of my rod, you know, and I take it and I turn it and turn it and turn it and clean the dust out of it. And I get dust out of it and everything. I mean, where it's built up, the powder. Yeah, take it to a gunsmith. Have them do a real thorough cleaning on it. Uh, chamber, mention, hey, I need the cl- chamber cleaned too. And have them check that extractor and then just let them work with it. I think you're going to, you know, you'll get this problem figured out. All right. I have another question, if I could, please. Well, why not? All right, well, good deal. I have a, a Dan Wesson three fifty seven Magnum. It's, it has uh, it's one of the weapons. It's my father's weapon, and uh, it had, he only had the six inch barrel for it. It does have other options: <laughs> two, four, six, eight, and ten inch barrels. Is right. there any way I could possibly dig those up some kind of way? Oof, man. Michelle, I mean, that's going to be hard I to would, find. I would, I would like to have the whole collection, to, you know, sure. for the weapon. That would be ideal. What do you think, gun broker? I'd try gun broker. Um, yeah, I don't know on those. I mean, sometimes, you know, when you get into these interchangeable or convertible calibers, it, you actually end up sending your pistol to, I mean, like, for instance, like Ruger or somebody could make a, a new cylinder for you. Um, well, it's not a case. No, 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 no. You're just different I, barrel, it's just different barrel lengths. Right. But what I'm, right. where I'm going with this is you may be able to call Dan Wesson and supply them with a serial number, and perhaps they would be able to come up with some barrels. Well, well these you. were these were made so that the user can swap out barrels. Right, they just you, turn off yeah. the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they basically got a nut on the front. You pull it out, take the barrel sleeve off. You, you know, uh, that's. I would say maybe Gun Broker are also. Are you familiar with Gun Broker? I'm familiar. I just I haven't been online to do any of that yet. Okay, yeah. I, I would I check that. Think, I don't even think Dan Weston is in. Uh, they're not the same company anymore. Right. But you, the other thing oh. you could do is there very well may be a Dan Wesson Collectors Association. That's just a users group, yeah. Yep, some kind of group like that, and that might be uh, something to do. So you might just check that out, too. Oh, it sure is. All right. All right. Well, I wish you luck well, with it. And look, very much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it, and have yourself a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you all, and a good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way to close that out. All right, so I tell you what, let's take a break because we've got some ideas for uh, Christmas presents and such, and uh, we will come back. And there's some other things. I want to tell you about a robbery where the crooks made off with lingerie. We'll just leave it at that. We'll be right back. Get ready for something totally new from LMT. A short personal defense weapon with an integral suppressor. Featuring new suppressor technology from Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, the CSW, or confined space weapon, has a 24-inch overall length profile and includes their new high-performance suppressor that can shoot supersonic and subsonic ammunition with no changes. 
Chambered for the 300 blackout, the CSW allows quick movement in tight quarters. For more, visit lmtdefense.com. For tactical equipment for military, law enforcement, and shooting enthusiasts, look for the name Elite Survival Systems, creators of high-quality, intelligently designed products for concealed carry, discreet transport, and rigorous tactical uses. Elite Survival Systems knows there isn't just one method of carry that works for everyone. Elite offers a vast array of concealment products to fit your lifestyle, including holsters, belts, vests, pouches, slings, bags, backpacks, and cases. Find out more at EliteSurvival.com. We're back, and I, ha- I guess I have to first jump in and say, what the heck was he talking about there? We had a robbery locally here. A Victoria's Secrets store was robbed. Two, at least two women inside, we've seen the video of it, security video, and they just filled a bunch of bags of clothes, and I guess the employees must have figured out what was going on, and a couple of them went and stood by the door. And these women going out, just without even breaking stride, just pulled out either mace or pepper spray and sprayed them and hit one of them with a stun gun as they went out. And now the police say they're looking for five people, but they stole about $1,500 worth of product. And I'm thinking, so what's the APB on that sound like? You know, look for, you know, five women with cool, you know, lingerie. I don't know. I'll be on the lookout. The suspect's five-foot white female wearing a purple teddy. <laughs> You know, it's like, uh, what? Uh, but it was interesting. I was talking to a cop friend. He says, oh, yeah. He says, uh, yeah, for police officers, if somebody, you know, is going to use or using pepper spray or a taser or a stun gun on them, that is justifiable to shoot them. Because if, he, if either of those is used on a police officer or a you, for that matter, then you get incapacitated and that person can come and take your gun. Or do anything else they want to. You. Or do anything else. Exactly right. Hmm. So... That's just one of those weird deals. You're going, really? Didn't take any money. Just took a bunch of Victoria's Secrets clothing. I don't, you know, just why would you risk a felony? Well, I, you know, it's one of those deals. There is no why when it comes to crooks. Yeah. They're just, they just do it. Who knows? Yeah. And with my luck, somebody stun gun me and I'd have a heart attack and die. They'd have a murder charge on them when they thought they were just robbing. Now, well, that would make you feel better, at least, if that happened. Yeah, at least, you know, one less thing for me to argue. <laughs> One with. less thing to worry about, as Forrest Gump said. Yeah. <laughs> well, I have, a, right. I have a gift for you and Michelle and for both of our listeners. <laughs> well, I think one of them got tired and left, so yeah. there you go. Um, yes. con- considering I'm losing my voice, uh, yes, you are. I'm going to be speaking less today. So that's my oh, gift to you. That's, that's our gift. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, Miss, it is that time of year, man, when you get the bug and you're all of a sudden your voice is starting getting lower and lower and you realize I have to speak more softly because there's just no power left oh, in it. Right, right. And I'm singing, that, singing Kim Karn songs and Tom Waits. And, can I recommend some green tea and honey? You can. Go ahead. I recommend some green tea and honey. Too. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, thank you for that recommendation. <laughs> Some people put shots of liqueur in there, also, but uh, you know, I know That's that you're not. On gym, I know you're so. not an alcohol person, so no, I'm but, not. But honey, of course, has this its may own be your natural day to start. effect. Yeah, I'm not anti-alcohol. I just don't like getting obliterated. You, you picked a bad day to stop sniffing glue, you know. <laughs> right. That's it. <laughs> So anyway, you two have at it. <laughs> so, talk amongst yourselves is what he said. <laughs> oh, let me listen. I guess, I guess you could still, you know, throw questions my way and just not get an answer. You just got keep uh, it interesting. Uh, okay. Just grunt. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So Michelle, uh, I was looking at this list of. Uh, I was just kind of scribbling on things there, and I, I'm sure you were thinking some things as I, as I was going through this going, yeah, but what about, what about, right. so any ideas? Oh, gosh, I kind of have my own little piece of paper here as well that I was scribbling <laughs> stuff down on. You know, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, you have people come in like, oh, I just don't know what to do. There's, mm-hmm. you know, all kinds of things. It just depends on how much you want to spend or how you want to mm-hmm. present it. But any shooter, I don't care what they do, what caliber they have, anyone could always use extra cleaning brushes. So invest in good cleaning brushes. Mm. These can be stocking stuffers, um, you know, patches, a cylinder brush if they have a revolver. But mm-hmm. I think a fun stocking stuffer are these cleaning mats and you can get rubber mats in handgun or long gun. You can get wax canvas cleaning mats, uh, just anything to help protect mm. mom's kitchen table. <laughs> 
<laughs> Speaking as a mom and a shooter, right? right? But it holds any kind of parts. So they're not rolling around. You're not losing things. I just think that that's an awesome gift. Um, I saw a cleaning mat or a parts mat, something that Brown else had, had magnets built into it. Oh, that's cool. That's kind of cool. So your little screws and parts don't go taken off on you. Right. That's neat. Um, you had these little steel target, like dueling trees. Where you you have Mm. two targets Mm. on each side and you try to get them all to the other person's opposing side. (laughs) Those are always fun. Um, You can get those for like for 22s or bigger calibers or you can get them for air guns. You could shoot them in the hallway at your house. Different. (laughs) Well, I don't know about that. I would rather. (laughs) We used to do that. We just say, all right, fire in the hole. Nobody come in the hall. (laughs) Put your flag out. (laughs) <laughs> That's right. That's right. But, you know, we've talked about, like, the clothing and stuff, um, mm-hmm. you know, the, the thermals, the, the different layers that you get, because some people, depending on where they go hunting, need all those different uh, layers, and they're thin. But technology has changed. Get rid of the big, bulky stuff. Buy something really good. Yeah, cotton uh, thermal underwear is, you should burn it all. It's worthless. <laughs> it gets wet when you exercise and work. And then it just sits there and makes you chill. So now they've got this, you know, much better synthetics or uh, a combination or maybe even that merino wool layers are really good. I like those. They're they're expensive. They are. But, you know, know, you don't need a thousand pair, a pair or two. No, You know, you start the collection with one, right? Right. You just start with (laughs) one set. You know, you wear those all week in hunting camp and then you have pretty much the cabin to yourself. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Rinse them out, hang them by the fire. (laughs) (laughs) Like, Like everybody else does, right? But you know, I can tell you from experience that watch out for polyester long handles uh, too close to the fire. Exactly. You can't get too close. That's, <laughs> yeah. yep. it, it will melt. Yes, it will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you, you know, for anybody that's out there, uh, Oceanside, down there with you, Tom, those um, waterproof ocean bags are great. Waterproof Big. matches. Mm-hmm. All that type of or, stuff. You know, and that stuff would be good anywhere where it rains, which exactly. is kind of like everywhere. Right, right. Uh, yeah, those, uh, what do they call them, boat bags or canoe bags, basically duffel bags that are waterproof. Mm-hmm. Not and a bad you, way to go. And yeah. you can get different uh, sizes to accommodate your stuff. Because we all have <laughs> stuff. Right. But don't forget your dogs. That's one thing I'm going to say. You know, life vest, the little booties to protect their feet, these LED oh. safety collars. You know, people out there work their dogs for coyotes and ducks and anything that, you know, basically their dog will learn to chase pheasants mm-hmm. and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, pay back. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take, take care of the dogs and, you know, give them stuff. And if you have dog people in your family, if they're not thinking about it, you could say, hey, you know, here's something for Rover. That's right. That would be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Okay. So just a few things. I mean, there's the list is endless, but, you know, we covered classes and range bags and muffs and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, those are kind of the obvious ones, right. that, you know, but, but it's interesting. Here's the other thing that occurs to me. People, I think, don't realize that your earmuffs do wear out. Yes, they do. The seals in them will go flat after a few years and you're not getting near the protection that you used to. Right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's awake. <laughs> That or I'm not sure. He might have just gotten kicked. <laughs> was, was that job of the hut back there? Oh, 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 oh. But, yeah, they do. So you can replace them. I mean, you can get new, just the pad protection, mm-hmm. the part that goes around the, the ear cup the itself. Seals, new mm-hmm. seals, yep. But, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, so if you got old ones, the other thing is they're not really expensive. The passive ones are not expensive. Right. You can get yourself new ones that don't look as nasty as the ones that you've been using for the last 20 years. <laughs> Technology you know. changes, right? The bulkiness yeah, changes. That's right. They're they're better. Uh, I do like the idea of getting somebody one of those big jars of foam plugs, though. Yes. Isn't it cool? That'd be a fun thing to get, actually. We use those for all kinds of things, though. I mean, you know. Hunting camps. Oh. Hunting camps. I'm telling you, there's always somebody who snores like crazy. Right? right. Well, it's just any kind of lawn equipment, chainsaws. I yeah. mean, this is not even limited to just gun people. You're right. You know, You're right. Jim's wearing them right now, so he doesn't really have to listen. It's true. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about uh, buying cheese puffs for people that are shooters. Nice. And, and Tom just mentioned people yeah. that are snoring. That would stop them. <laughs> There's... Drop a couple in, you're good to go. Are you on? Are you on like cold medicine now? <laughs> right. <laughs> I should it just be. kicked in. <laughs> 
that, that you know that night quill that's for night man i'm just telling you oh, okay <laughs> Day after quill, show after show night quill, quill. Yeah. <laughs> after show, yeah. oh lordy oh my uh, goodness you, oh, gosh. you go old old school too you know the flint and steels are always a fun thing to have rolling around in a vehicle Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> well, I mean, starting a fire, you know, any of that type of stuff. It's, it's no, a good I'm, emergency piece of equipment. <laughs> that's why we have flamethrowers. Oh, well, I don't have one of them. I need to, <laughs> need to get my go bag updated, I guess. That's right. <laughs> really, I was looking. It's about 1500 bucks. You can buy a flamethrower. It'll shoot like 30 oh. or 50 feet out in front of you. What is the fuel? Uh, diesel. You use diesel fuel, and I think it was a combination of diesel and maybe gasoline cut. And then they, there's a separate tank that is uh, like a CO2 compressor that sprays its stuff out. Right. And igniter uh, at the end. It got an igniter like a barbecue pit igniter. It's pretty crazy. It's like Rube Goldberg kind of a thing. <laughs> cool. which, so. which leads me to my next ideas. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. First aid kits. <laughs> Fire extinguishers. Burn ointment. Burn ointment. Yeah, there you go. That's right. <laughs> but fire extinguishers, flares, all those things. You know, just people who are in their Road, vehicles traveling. Road hazard kit. Yeah. 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 You know, and how many times you get pulled up behind a, a something and you're, okay, we're going to be stuck here or... I, I have done it where I pulled up on a wreck at night, and I've grabbed road flares and just take off running down the road, popping flares, dropping them to try to keep other cars from coming and plowing into yep. the mess. Yep, yep, yep. You know, flashlights, spotlights, yeah, all yeah, that type of stuff. You know, it's stuff. a great thing to get, and it, they're not that expensive. Those Space Age Myler uh, blankets. Especially. Space blankets. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. because that's something that's you know weighs an ounce, and it could keep you yep. alive. And then, you know, and I've heard people say, well, they're not great. Okay, yeah. We're, we're not talking about trying to be comfortable. But we're just trying, the to, we're trying to stay alive here. <laughs> exactly. That's what we're doing. Yeah. And, you yeah. Can, I mean, you can stash them anywhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have, uh, that'd be perfect. You know the little pocket behind the front seat in your car? Mm-hmm. Yeah, stuff them, uh, stuff a couple of them in there. Stuff a couple of those uh, little tourniquet uh, kits in there, and now you've already got your kit ready to go. Or you could have a small go bag that's a car go bag that ends up being uh, like you're talking about, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Your first aid stuff, uh, a fire extinguisher. How many people have a fire extinguisher in their vehicle? Hardly any. How about that? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't say. I don't, I don't either. I know I should. I just don't. You know, yeah. I'm, I know most people don't carry these around anymore, but jumper cables. <laughs> yeah, I, I, those, I mean, yeah. I can't Do tell you? you how many yep. people I have helped personally, um, you know, even in the parking lot at work. Like, oh, my car's dead. The battery's dead. Mm-hmm. Well, well. I'm sure I, a, I'd be know. happy to help you for 15 bucks. 50 bucks. bucks. Yeah. There you go. That's right. That's how she's financing this whole <laughs> habit of hers, you know. I need to buy some 327 ammo. Right. That's right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the list can. It's endless. You, I mean, you could go on and on. Well, it's and actually, on with yeah. In fact, we, we plan to. We're going to come back from this break, and we're going to go on and on and on for with two this. weeks straight, right? For, Sweet. That's right. And so, uh, but we're also going to be talking about maybe a memorable Christmas. Uh, so we'll talk about that, and the after show continues because nobody can make us. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. All right, we're back if I behave. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, memorable Christmases. Uh, I found a photograph that I had not seen of my dad. It would have been about 1946. He was a student at LSU after the war. And he's got this strawny-looking 
It's a black and white picture. A uh, little Charlie Brown looking tree. It's awful. <laughs> and he's got like uh, a few little things. Cause, I mean, nobody had any money then. And he's a student anyway. Just came out, got out of the Army Air Corps. And there's a bottle of booze there under the, t- under the tree. And he has a revolver of some sort in his hand. I don't know which revolver it is. But it's just one of those deals you're going, okay, there's an interesting Christmas. Uh, there's, you know, And I think mom had maybe a pack. Of, she was a heavy smoker, which ended up killing her. But uh, she had, uh, I think, a carton of cigarettes. So you had alcohol, tobacco, and firearms right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you support the habit. Yeah, that's right. If you needed some explosives, you'd be all set. That's right. That's right. And who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but that was before the, the E came in, so it was just ATF right, back gotcha. then. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Funny. Fun stuff. So I started my list for my kids. Yes. I'm buying, at least I know I'm buying my middle son. I'm buying him a ticket to the NRA convention in Chicago. Really? 2018, yeah. He's never been to one. He has no idea what he's in for. He's going to love it. Uh, and you have. I have. I've been to a couple yes. of them. They rock. Yeah, yeah they really it's, do. It's kind of like just... SHOT Show, but for the average Joe. Yeah, no, it's SHOT Show for everybody, and there's more activities than at SHOT Show. SHOT Show, you know, the companies are selling to dealers and right, all that. It's all the B2B stuff, right? Yeah, and the NRA is consumer stuff where, you know, there's just tons of things, fun things to do. And you never know, the young, gun, or the young guns may show up again. Yeah, uh, you never know. Never know. <laughs> the Gun Talk crew. Speaking of which, we can tease that we're going to have um, a music video out here before too long. We'll uh, Let's leave it at that. Leave it at that. De- <laughs> details to come. <laughs> I, oh, I guess I'm not part of that. Uh, my backup career is gone again. <laughs> You just well, keep backing up. You're having right. it. Yeah. I know. That's what he tells me all the time. Back up a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit more. We got Jim, you singing. I just fell off the stage. That's okay. It's okay. It's all right. We got you singing tenor. Tenor 12 feet. Tenor 12. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, all right. Here's a question for you, Michelle. If you had to get rid of one of your guns, what, what would it be? I wouldn't get rid of one of mine. Okay. <laughs> She rejects the question out of hand. Just I just, forget it. Can I get this rid of somebody happening. else's? <laughs> so you can have it? <laughs> um, uh, no, I can't think of anything I would get rid of. It's not happening. It's not often I just catch you flat-footed, <laughs> yeah. but that was great. Yeah, no. Next. <laughs> Silly question. Move on. What, was... <laughs> what about the opposite? If you, could, if you could double up on any gun you had, what would it be? Um... You know, I don't know if I would want to double up on anything necessarily. You didn't have that as an option. If I you have to, or okay, you get a new I, gun. If, if there's had, a, new, a new gun on you know, any category or anything you'd like to get that you don't have, you know what? I do. I have to be honest with you. I do like and enjoy shooting the new Glock 42s or 43s. Mm-hmm. Um, I still find myself searching. For a Henry 327, I can't find that anywhere. Mm. <laughs> I know people out there found them, but I'm trying to, you know, go through my distributors and 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 right. get one that way. Um, so still haven't still haven't found that. I know what I'd want. What's Where that? I'd want that suppressed Tommy gun. <laughs> oh, cool! Dumb. Can I have the typewriter? <laughs> That's pretty neat. That's a really, cool thing. Yeah, it, it really was. I would. I'm thinking that. About the one that kind of has my attention right now, and I've mentioned before, I just haven't done anything about it, is I would like to have a nice 28-gauge over and under mm-hmm. mm. for no particular reason at all that it just kind of strikes me as a fun gun. They're fun to shoot, and I do have 28 gauges, but uh, I'd like to have one of those and have it fitted to me with my measurements and all of that. And Is that so you can facilitate the um, QRP, the quail reduction program? That's right. Exactly right. Or pheasants. You could actually, uh, 28 gauge would be great for early season pheasants when they're not getting up too far out. Um, doves be great for dove hunting. So they're yeah, just fun. They're light, uh, kind of whippy and feel like little magic wands. What, the, just what the 410 wishes it was? Well, you know, the 410 is great. It just, for most things, it doesn't have, for me, I need a little more help. I need a little bit, a few more pellets out there. Uh, I'm just not a good enough shot to do well with a 410 consistently. I mean, I have one, well, actually, I have two 410s, but I have one that I really like. And uh, it was a Winchester Model 42, Uh which was there, the Model 12 in 
410, they call it the Model 42. It's just a delightful little pump. And so I'm not sure that I shoot it well, but it's one of those that doesn't really matter. It's just fun to take it out and shoot it now and then. Cool. But I think a 28 gauge over and under, if I had to just pick one gun right now. I was uh, interested, although I will tell you, uh, I was talking to a guy we work with who does a lot of special forces work, uh, not a pretender, but a, the real deal. And he was telling me that the that a lot of the special forces groups, teams, are switching to the 6.5 Creedmoor from the 308. Mm-hmm. It doesn't shock me. No? No. I mean, just everything that you read, any of these shooters that are doing well with the, like the PRS um, right. series of shooting, I mean, that gun is just a flat shooter. It goes the distance. Yeah, it handles the wind so well because you've got yeah. these great long bullets with high BCs. Right. That really is a difference in the wind mm-hmm. as much as anything. 900 yards, you want to reach out and touch somebody, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he just got back from doing some shooting at uh, 1,800 yards. Exactly. Wow. I was going to say, they go well over that. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. way out there. People have no idea, honestly, how far some of these... I mean, we talk about how how comfortable we are in, in taking a shot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, taking a shot versus some of these target competitions is, is completely different. And, yeah, these guys just... How I mean, much, they're out how there. How much over two, are you shooting 2, at 1,800 yards? You're, not, you're holding right on. Because your scope's compensated. You you dial them up. You've got all your load data, and you range, you know, if it's known distance, it's easy. Uh, now, you can dial it in. Now, the wind is the issue. The, the drop is just mathematical. You just dial it in, and that's going to be the drop. But the wind's unpredictable, right? The wind is unpredictable. And you may have three different winds going that far. I mean, it could be right. calm here, le- from re- right to left, from left to right as you go further down there. It's a bear. And, so and the pros can see the, that, yeah. That is the ma- magic of the whole thing. And they'll look through a spotting scope. Read that mirage. They will actually adjust the focus and be looking at the air <laughs> as they go from here to out there and look at which way the mirage is moving. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So you, you, you could have a bullet drift you, left and right then back left again. It, it mm-hmm. gets real wow. geeky on you. Yeah, yeah. It does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why you, when you do any of these, uh, <laughs> I've, we've gone out to a range where we've gone out to a, a thousand yards using a little, uh, you know, bold action and <laughs> you have a steel target out there. And when you hear that, and there's obviously somebody on a spotting scope, but mm-hmm. you hear that like, woo, everybody's just yeah. like, yeah, oh, yeah you know, it's yeah. exciting. <laughs> what, what's really fun, you got a spotter on the spotting scope and mm-hmm. you shoot and the spotter calls hit and then, and you, then hear you hear it, right? <laughs> Yeah. You go, oh, that's kind of cool. He saw it, and you got to wait for the sound to get back you to you. You have time to get a sandwich or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you're shooting way out there. It's, fu- it's fun. It's, the, it's the, fun. The, the old guy used to say, yeah, he shot him so far, he had to put salt in the bullet to, to preserve the meat until he could get there. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Oh, I've never heard that before. <laughs> but you'll use it now like it's your own. Yes, I will. Well, of course. Well, well why not, right? <laughs> right? It was but given yes. to me. <laughs> but of course. Uh, so... You, what are you guys doing? You got family coming in, or what you doing for Christmas? Um, yeah, it'll be a uh, a quiet evening for us, but yeah, close family be mm-hmm. around, and some they're not so little anymore, but the smaller kids that <laughs> that will be there. That's always fun. So right. we'll probably do some of our typical, you know, traditional stuff. Your right. your dinner and and presents, and then you know, just sitting and releasing the pants a little bit <laughs> after dinner time on the couch. <laughs> That may have been a little bit more information than we were looking for there. Well, we can take that out. <laughs> Not a chance. Jim's editing this, so it's in. Oh, but, you it's know, locked. just re- just relaxing, really, yeah. for us. It's it's not – try not to make it be a uh, a huge day. I mean, we have obviously a few presents that we push around and share, but, um, you know, that's not the – the main focus for us. So right. okay. that's just, that's just a bonus. Yep. Yep. I understand. All right, Jim, you got that youngster. She's one of my favorite young people out there. So. Yeah. She and I are going to go uh, strong arm, rob the neighbor. Just, uh, I love that. You wait till your neighbor gets good presents. Then you can just go take them. Right. Tis the season. Shoot. Yes. I like that. <sighs> By the way, let me throw something. This is going to switch around on you, but I had a thought thinking about throw this for both of you. All of this talk about uh, all the Everybody getting in trouble with sexual harassment and groping and all that stuff. And I got to think, I was thinking, you know, I bet a lot, a lot of that wouldn't happen if each time it did, did the woman just turned around and punched him in the nose or gave him a bloody nose. Yep. Go, you know, and I'm thinking, we need to be teaching our young girls 
self-defense on several levels. Physical, certainly. Verbal, give them the verbal tools. Give them the confidence that takes, that kind of thing. But quite literally, I think, uh, physical training to make, give them the confidence of, I am not going to put up with that, and I won't have to put up with that from anybody. And maybe this is that epiphany that allows us to start doing that with girls as they start. And I don't know what the age is, but I'm thinking, you know, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you know, we start them with that we've, kind of thing. We've got girls in martial arts that are four or five years old. Do you? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, once you get that confidence and you're competent, because I think confidence comes from being competent, I don't think you'll let people do stuff like that to you. And a lot of it, too, is, is you find these, these kids, people in general, once they have a little bit of, of training, their situation awareness is better, their attitude is better, their heart rate's lower, all kind mm-hmm. of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. So. With just the educational side to be able to read a situation. Mm-hmm. You know, you to know. And, the, you know, that's one of the things, like, when we had Tiger on here and you appreciated his phone call, and that was that was an excitement time. It was fun. Yeah. yeah thank you for doing that, setting that up. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think the purpose of a lot of these classes and, and one of the huge benefits of going as a couple is obviously your intake of information through your own ears is different than the person sitting next to you. That's one. Mm -hmm. So you might pick up on something or relate it somehow differently. But I think taking a class together, hearing that same information keeps you on the same level for training, helps Mm -hmm. keep you uh, aware of one another um, as they look around in a restaurant, you know, mm-hmm. you're kind of each other's back because you might be sitting face to face or, you know, next been, to one another. The same training together. Yeah. And I think you just, it helps mm. you read one another's facial movements or right. emotions or whatever it is without having to say a word. Whatever the you're verbal like, cue is. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, okay, what? The non-verbal cue. Yeah, yeah. And if push came to shove, you've trained together so you could you know, right. react together. Right. And I just think going out to the range, I think it just helps you keep your skill set maybe not the same, but similar. You keep mm-hmm. yourselves true and, and tried to, to what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. Yep. And involving the kids, I can only say that's a, a win-win for everybody because if they get it in when they're younger, it's going to be easier to keep it, mm-hmm. it going. Uh, I mean, not just... Not just the uh, the gun side of things, but just no, to keep no. the safety side the safety, of things going. The safety, the awareness, yeah. the uh, being aware of where you are, what's going on. And also the mindset that, you know, we don't, we're not victims in this family. And I don't right. care if somebody says, you know, your job's at risk or whatever else. Uh, you don't put up with that and you call them on it and you do whatever it takes, uh, whether it's a physical uh, thing or a verbal thing. And, you know, one of the problems is people don't know what to say. So you give them those verbal skills that here's what you say, you know, here's, you know, oh, knock that off or, you know, we're not going to do that. Or, you know, I told you stop that right now, things like that. But you have to actually give them the things to say. Right. Right. Yeah. And I I think, you know, knowing where your what if is for you, you know, Mm -hmm. and for kids, it's going to be different. Obviously, you know, the the touching Obviously has to become, you know, we talk about safety danger all the time with our kids. Most people do, Um, you know, it, yeah, there's a whole lot more that's involved with that. You know, the phones and social media and there's so much more to try to protect your kids against that you really can't do it too soon. That's my opinion. Yep. If you're a parent, you know, that's a responsibility. If If you're a grandparent, it's an opportunity for you. Yeah. To be involved in that, with mm-hmm. obviously with the okay of the parents. Right. But, you know, it, there's a lot that goes along with that teaching and, you know, the morals and being able to follow direction and stop when you're told to stop. And, uh, you know. Yeah. If you're having to tell your child no 12 times in a restaurant, you need to have gone back in time and fixed that problem by yep. the time before you got there. That's right. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to kick you loose because we're all going to be off on Christmas Eve to spend time with families. Thank, uh, thank you for that, by the way. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you, guys. And then we're going to do this on New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. Because that way we can start drinking early and do the show. <laughs> that way. They that. probably think we already do. <laughs> You don't think we're going to try this sober? <laughs> we haven't done a show sober in 15 years. Oh, I didn't know. 
<laughs> oh, now you got some catching up to do. I do. The party. Holy cow. I'm a lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Sniff the cork. I'm good. <laughs> you guys have a great Christmas. Be safe. Merry Bye Christmas. Merry Christmas. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.